for, uh, for effort. Um, Cal with plus two attack upgrade, and Effort's troops just melting in the face of all those Sonic Storms, and then Cal with uh, a very good move there, leaving a lot of his um, High Templar unmorphed, and hence being able to get tons of Storm off against the uh, mainly low-tech army there of uh, of Effort's, and oh, another brilliant Storm there, taking down tons of Zerglings there, and uh, I think I think Effort's defenses are pretty much gone at that 7 o'clock location, I think his troops are pretty much whittled down, I don't know what he can do to help defend that, and once that goes down, Cal will have taken a massive lead in this game. Certainly he's even up the game with a combination of harassment and uh, taking down that base at the eight, 7 o'clock position. But the 8 o'clock base is, uh, I think, the key of the game right now. That is the Zerg player's third gas. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Effort harassing a new expansion going up for Cal at the um, at the 5 o'clock position. Effort certainly not playing poorly in this game at all. I have to applaud Effort for uh, playing quite well on a new map here and definitely, definitely using the passageways to his advantage rather than to his disadvantage. Uh, I remember Klazar complaining a lot about Monty Hall being um, a, a very Protoss biased map and uh, especially against the Zerg players. Uh, very Protoss biased in the Zerg versus Protoss matchup. Oh! Scourge picking up that shuttle! Nice Scourging there! Um, so Effort certainly has not allowed this to become a very Protoss favorite map. He certainly used the passageways to his advantage uh, instead of just letting Cal take advantage of it. And he's certainly taken down Cal's shuttles very well. But Cal, meanwhile, has mainly gone for a, uh, a mainly um, gateway level force here. Zealots, Dragoons, and High Templars, so no more shuttles for him. Meanwhile, Effort is morphing a lot of lurkers in the back there. He needs to get them out, though, before... Oh, a great storm on the lurker eggs! Those certainly going to soften up those lurkers uh, a little bit before they hatch. And another great storm on those lurker eggs! Those uh, lurkers are sitting ducks, and wow! Did you just see that? Some of those lurkers just utterly were aborted before they were even born from those eggs. They were just uh, utter abortion there. Um, disappearing, not even dying, but disappearing before they hatch. That's really sad. Uh, a, a life is... <laughs> I don't know, I was going to make some anti-abortion thing, but uh, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> never mind, never mind, not to go into that. I was going to say something like, uh, an unborn lurker's life is worth, uh, something or another. Alright, anyway, Speedlot's going north towards the base of, uh, uh, the natural expansion of efforts. Uh, no observer with them though, so uh, that lurkers can be able to move up and do some harassment. Try and take out that spore colony action, so observers can go in and uh, and, and take out those. Uh, help them take out the lurkers. Uh, and now, perhaps going for the evolution chambers. He's got that little crack force up there um, of speed lots. If Cal was uh, Reach, I'd call them man lots. But of course, uh, uh, no other zealots in the world other than Reaches are, are that manly to be called man lots. The rest of them can call just be called a crack team or, um, I don't know, hero zealots, but none of them are real man lots, unless the man toss controls them, obviously. Uh, Cal has morphed a lot of his High Templar into Archons now, and that army is going to be very powerful in the late game. Um, Cal's uh, little crack force here of wannabe manlots is now going to get taken down, and they're wannabe manlots because, look, they didn't take down anything. If uh, Reach had six zealots there, he'd be taking down every single building, plus all the drones, plus all the overlords even. That's right, Reach's zealots can shoot air. They're just that baller. Um, anyway, late game tech here going up for both players. Uh, Ultralist Cameron going up for Effort. He's going to be pumping those Ultras out. Um, Effort has managed to retake his uh, lower left corner, actually. A little bit surprising. Oh, Cal catching a bunch of Lurkers in the middle there. And what I like about this map is the constant action it produces. I like this map so far because since there's so many avenues of, uh, of attack, both players can constantly be going for these little sniping attacks on all different routes, whereas a lot of standard maps uh, really lend towards both players just building up and building up, maybe doing a little bit of harassment through drops, uh, you know, storm drops or lurker drops, but then just waiting for that big maxed out army fight in the middle, and I don't like that. I like uh, these kind of games much more. And oh, missing a hit on that hatchery there, but taking down the hatchery now finally at the upper right. Um, so still five bases for... Uh, effort. Four bases up for Cal, though, in total, and I think uh, Cal has certainly equalized this game, although Effort has stabilized the front. So once again, we're moving into late game with a fairly even forces, I would call it right now, um, between the two players, and it's going to be about control and uh, macro once again. Well, as it always is in StarCraft, but uh, certainly neither player has a lead. Plus two attacks still for Cal, and Effort going for a nice attack here at the southern expansion of Cal. If he can pick off that Nexus, that'll be very brutal for Cal. That'll be terrible for Cal. He's picking off lots of pros with his uh, Zerglings, and he's using that ramp to his advantage. Those probes are caught up on the ramp, so the Zerglings are able to still cause more havoc uh, to the probes that are still mining, and uh, if they focus fire on the Nexus, they might... No, they won't be able to take down the Nexus, but certainly taking out a lot of probes there with his Zerglings. So nice work there from Effort. Um, doing a lot of economic damage, but uh, <laughs> nice work there by Cal going for a storm drop. Cal was just 
absolutely brilliant with those storm drops uh, this game so far, and uh, I think that is just a hallmark of a very strong Protoss player is how he can um, just continuously keep the Zerg player busy and uh, off guard and, and just not able to uh, concentrate all of his forces in one location because once the Zerg does that, they're very powerful, but if he can prevent them by using drops everywhere, uh, the Zerg army really dissipates and really just does not have the same power it would otherwise. Um, the Protoss army, of course, doesn't have to be involved in those harassments. Those harassments generally involve tech units, so uh, the Protoss army can stay together and protect each other. Um, Cal might be going for an attack at the lower left once again. Uh, looks like no, he's just going to retreat here. Um, so basically, uh, now more of a cat and mouse game. Both players are trying to rush in and take down expansions without uh, necessarily facing the main army until they feel like they're in a better position. Uh, once again, we're seeing the low tech units for um, for effort. Although I'm glad to see he's gone for at least some higher tech. Uh, Hyuk last uh, series did not go for any higher tech, really above lurkers. But we have seen defilers and perhaps ultralists coming up soon. But still, mainly a zergling hydra army here for uh, effort so I guess the Zerg players have decided that on this map um, against Protoss a uh, low-tech uh, build is the best and uh, now we're seeing that uh, Defiler I don't know what that Defiler is gonna do I'm gonna guess that he's gonna go for a plague there uh, effort trying to pick off those cannons but those hydros got trapped and they're gonna get taken down yeah five hydralisks just moving in here I don't know what they're gonna be able to do down here but certainly uh, trying to be heroic uh, but not gonna go anywhere there oh and being burled actually interesting enough Cal might decide to ignore them. And a nice plague now going off on the Zealots, catching about eight Zealots there. That's going to hurt him a little bit. Uh, storm going off, though, on most of those uh, units there. And will that Defiler escape? That Defiler is quite valuable, of course. Uh, 50 minerals and 150 gas is nothing to scoff at. I don't know if it survived or not. Yeah, now the first Ultralisks are out. And by the way, plus four, plus two for those Ultras. That's going to be painful for Cal to deal with. So that means says, uh, that means the Zerglings are plus two, plus two. So uh, Effort is certainly on top of the game with his uh, with his uh, upgrades. But now the attack coming down at the eight o'clock location. Like I said, this is a critical point here. Um, this is a critical point of uh, Effort's game. But Effort, meanwhile, has Ultralisks coming down here to help defend. I think the Ultras are going to be able to clean this up, but not before the lair goes down there. Uh, that's right, it is a lair, not a hatchery, because he, uh, he wanted the extra HP. But I think the Zealots are just going to focus fire and probably pick off the lair. No, Cal, what are you doing? You need to pick off that lair, Cal! Oh, Cal making a big mistake there, I think, by not picking off that lair. He certainly could have um, with the time he had at that expansion, but that expansion is allowed to survive, and that is a mistake from Cal, I have to say. Cal uh, probably just working off of one or two bases now, that 8 o'clock, uh, sorry, that 5 o'clock base is up for him, but I think um, his mineral only is still up, so really two bases mining minerals, whereas uh, Effort has at least three still mining minerals, and not a huge drop going down here. A lot of these overlords getting stormed, but not before they drop their deadly cargo of Ultralisks, and really, Cal is in terrible position now. I didn't see um, such a big turnaround coming, but just looking at the food count, Cal is down to 32 food counts, and Effort has a whopping 150, and Cal GG's, wow, he really was farther behind in the mineral count than I had thought, and um, after uh, that attack went completely sour for him at the lower left, uh, he basically had no forces left, so Effort picks up the first game, surprisingly, on the map, Plasma, we're moving on once again to Return of the King between Effort and Cal, hope you enjoyed, this is Collar signing off.